Hello, hello. This is Yu Zhang. We will get started with talking about profitable online non-clinical one-on-one work for art therapists. So, if you're an art therapist, this is perfect for you. I'm very excited to share about this type of business that we can do if you are an art therapist. This is really important to know because you know, and especially valuable because it's just not shared anywhere else. Like I know. We have extensive training as art therapists, right? We have we learn so many things about this trade of work. However, we never learn about the business part of things. But the business part of things is very important. It allows us to actually deliver our service and do the work. And so, I think that this is going to be really, really important if you are trying to get into the self employment path, or you're already there, but you're trying to make things more profitable, sustainable for you. I'm going to talk about、uh, all you need to know about a certain type of work, the online non-clinical work, and what's possible in terms of doing this work,、uh, and specifically like the money part of it, like what is financially possible for you in terms of the money that you can earn. I'm going to give you some real examples, and also I'm going to share with you what it takes to get booked out online with this type of work. Okay, so basically you're going to. Learn about on- online non-clinical work, what's possible in terms of the money, and how to get booked out. What it takes to get booked out. All right. So first of all, I just want to say, like, I know this is especially valuable for our therapists because we oftentimes get burnt out, right? Live trying to make an income with clinical work or different types of even positions out there. Of we often experience income ceiling because. And I'm gonna share a little bit about my experience with this too. And also, there's a lot of restrictions within our work environment, so that's why I'm talking about online non-clinical work, right? And the honest truth is that sometimes we are not a good fit for nine to five clinical work, which is what I have realized、uh, in my career. All right. So, and I'm gonna share with you a little bit more about that. First of all, <laughs> in the first place, I went through art therapy training masters, but getting a clinical nine to five job as an art therapist was, for me at least, and I know there are many others as well who experience the same thing. But like, it was really almost impossible. Like, it seemed very impossible. It's very, very hard. First of all, to get that clinical job, nine to five job. Uh, especially if you just graduated, right? Crazy. I don't know what the possibility percentages are, but like, yeah, I felt very low, low percentage, right?、Uh, but even when I got my clinical nine to five job, I experienced a lot of challenges, right? I felt a lot of times I was the only art therapist, right? I was trying to fit into a workplace where they people didn't understand. Right, therapy, right? So it was almost like daily fighting for my role, daily fighting for my position, right? Things like that, and daily educating people that I have been working for a while. <laughs> I don't know. You guys might have, might experience this too. If you have experienced this, let me know in the comments. But also, there were a lot of other things that were really not aligned with me, like paperwork, lots of paperwork, right? Like it's all. It was almost like fifty fifty paperwork, right? Long commutes, definitely. I was in New York most of the time when I was doing clinical work, so lots of commuting. And if you combine all those hours, like all those hours, it really literally left me with so little time for myself, for my self care,、um, and that was really hard for me. And my health really actually declined a lot because so much burnout, right? And It just the the work really required a lot, wearing a lot of hats, different hats, not just doing art therapy, but like doing different things all the time, right?、Uh, case management、um, and recursion therapy and things like that. So I definitely、um, understand. I know there are lots of you out there who are also ma- wearing many hats right now, doing clinical stuff, or trying to do clinical art therapy work, right? I never knew, like back then when I was doing like cl- clinical work, I never knew there was an online world where this, like what I have right now, my online business is possible. Like I never knew that was a possibility. I wish someone maybe <laughs> could have told me, just like I was. I'm telling you guys right now. <laughs> um, nobody really talked about non-clinical work. I, I don't know if that was even a thing. It was just a. It was mentioned a little bit in my grad school, just as a, as a type of setting. So, like, a, you know, we talked about like non-clinical settings and clinical settings, but 
you know, it was not a real thing. Like it's, you, they don't consider non-clinical stuff, work and service providing is an actual path to doing our therapy work. But anyhow, how? I never knew that kind of path existed, but I did find out, you know, I started my thirsty for art business online. And what I realized when I started to do thirsty for art work on that business is like, wow, you know, like there were so many limitations that I was dealing with in my clinical path that I don't have to deal with in terms of doing non-clinical work. Like there was just so much freedom, flexibility, creativity involved. No, not no me trying to fit in some kind of box, right? I, I wasn't trying to fit into something that was not working. Cause I what I realized was that, you know, with clinical work, especially our, our our therapy work seems so like new in the clinical field of mental health, right? And so like the organization part of it, the legal part of it, it's just not there compared to other you know, maybe more established fields like psychiatry or maybe even social work, right? And so our interests as our therapists, and I'm I'm going to include creative arts therapists as well, um, because we have a lot of similarities together. Like, where our interests are not as protected as we want it to be, right? We want them to be, and we don't have as powerful organizations and entities that will protect our interests, and so we don't have. We feel like, you know, it feels like a day to day, you know, the reality of it is that we don't feel supported. We don't feel like, you know, we have a good grasp on business and, and expanding ourselves, our professional field and really expanding our potentials too. But, you know, I realized that depending on that fledgling system, that new, not as developed <laughs> kind of system was really not working for me. And probably was not working, is not working for a lot of us, our therapists, especially who are, you know, doing the kind of work in the field, right? Um, the difficult work, right? Um, I've definitely acknowledged that. And yeah, and so, and we ha always have to kind of like fit into what's available, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, what I realized, realized was that Thursday, with my online business, Thursday 4 I when I created that and and start to build that, I realized that, wow, I can really create something new here. I can really work on like something non-clinical, which means it's going to open up, you're gonna, it's going to open up the possibilities so much. I can do so much more than just local one-on-one -on -one hourly pay work, right? So I want to describe the step-by-step -step that is required or the tips, the things that you do need to know to have this online business in a profitable way and get built, right? So I just want to mention the tangible things I want to mention because I, I don't feel like I said that. Um, but the tangible things that you can do with non-clinical, non one-on-one, -on -one, online work, that's a mouthful, <laughs> is that you can really just focus and dedicate your time into delivering art therapy services or non-clinical art therapy services. So really focusing on the creative work that you can do, right? Creatively supporting someone. And then also second, you can really earn way beyond the income ceiling that we often have as clinical art therapists in the field uh, when we are employed by agencies. Uh, because, you know, I know agency pay is not that high. <laughs> most of the time and so non-clinical work can really open up so many possibilities in terms of earning way more and i'm going to mention like real numbers in just a bit um and also non-clinical work you can do online uh meaning you can be really flexible with your location if you're doing online sessions in the u.s and somewhere else <laughs> and so Definitely, there's flexibility in terms of location and also so much more flexibility in terms of time because you're reducing commute hours, you're reducing time that you do lots of different paperwork stuff and setting up space and things like that. All right. So those are the really advantages that I have learned, you know, online non-clinical work has can bring to lots of us, our therapists, right? All right. So does that make sense? Let me know if, if you guys have been listening here. If you guys have just joined, maybe even, um, that's my little story about my kind of how I came into 
the non-clinical path and why I think it's really helpful for a lot of us art therapists might be a good fit, right? And so maybe you're thinking like, okay, I really love the idea of non-clinical work um, and I really want to get into that, like doing it online, have my own business. If you are thinking that I also have observed or heard um, some mistakes that people often make when they think, okay, I want to do this. How do I do this? And they actually go for it. The biggest mistake I think that people make is number one, trying to do it alone because, you know, maybe there's not a lot of people around them talking about non clinical work, right? Which is natural, but, but yeah, they try to do it, do it alone. So um, the non clinical part seems very overwhelming for them. And so the overwhelm, uh, kind of actually stops them from actually pursuing anything. And then number two is trying to do other than one-on-one work. Um, and I'm going to re- tell you why I specifically mentioned one-on-one work for today's topic. Like, Because one-on-one work is the most profitable and easy way to start an online business. It is the easier way. I mean, you can do groups, you can do other things and, and courses and things like that down the road. However, I find that one-on-one work is the most successful and most most profitable in the beginning. And when you are profitable in the beginning, you have the funds to continue doing your work and actually grow your work and scale your work, right? Scale your business. So I find that it's the best thing if you're still starting. Yeah, so doing everything other than one-on-one work, I see as the biggest um, mistake. But I'm gonna show you some good examples of what is possible when you do one-on-one work, but also like other types of work in the future if you wanna do expand more, okay? And talk, wanna talk about like money. So what is our non-clinical work for our therapists? It's like applying art as therapy, right? You guys all know it's the more, we use the word therapeutic art, it's not a clinical service. It's not psychotherapy, uh, but it's just using art in a more creative way to help so- support someone's well-being. So it's not clinical treatment for any disorder. So this means that when you provide non-clinical work, uh, you're not providing mental health treatment. You're not depending on insurance, um, and you're not gonna likely call yourself art therapy especially if you don't have license or certification. But even if you do, you do have to separate out your service from your clinical service if you're already providing clinical service. Um, And so you would likely not call your non-clinical service art therapy. So just know that um, it's basically, the idea is basically using your skills, knowledge, and experience based on art therapy to help people in a non-clinical way. So supporting someone, but not treating their disorder. So I want to share with you the numbers that you can, that, that can inspire you, right? They can, they can give you some idea of how, what's possible when I do non-clinical online one-on-one work. Okay. Um, I want to give you some real examples. So if you do one-on-one programs, meaning one-on-one sessions, but they're like bundled into packages, which is something that's possible if you do non-clinical work. When you do clinical work, you cannot do this, right? Most likely. But when you do non-clinical work, you can package sessions into a program. All right, so if you have a one-on-one program, um, you can see, uh, let's say you see eight people, uh, weekly, one-on-one clients, at 250 a session, let's say that would be about 8,000 a month if you calculate it. If you did a little less that and then that for the fees, maybe you do like 195 a session, that will be a little over 6,000 a month, just eight people, uh, one-on-one sessions weekly. So that's a one-on-one program. Oh, another example is, I know you guys might be interested in doing like expanding more into not just one-on-one, but like workshops or groups. So if you did like one awesome two hour workshop per month, let's say, and you did like $120, $120 per person for 20 people, uh, it's a workshop, right? That would calculate out to be 2.4K, so $2,400 per so if, if you just did one workshop, that's $2,400 a month. Uh, if you did two workshops a month, that will be 4.8K, almost 5000 a month. And that's just two workshops, 
two workshops, <laughs> each one two hour. So crazy, right? Let's say if you did uh, another example is let's say you did like three month group program. So if you you had like a group program for ten, let's say ten people, um, and you did three months weekly sessions with those ten books, um, and the price point could be like four hundred a month for each person. That would be twelve k per three months. So that's like four thousand a month. Yes, <laughs> four thousand three k per three months. So that is that. That would just be one session per week because it's a group program, right? So that is another example of if you had a non clinical group program online, and you all do this online. So. Here are the steps. Here are the things that you will need to do, right, to get you to that point of having a profitable business and、um, doing non-clinical work successfully, right? Getting booked. So one is plan. So having an actual plan or strategy for your business,、uh, because when you don't have a plan or strategy, it can take a long time. Because and also it can feel like, you know, very. How would I say? Like you're doing so many different things, but they're not effective, right? And so you want to have, first of all, have a little system of getting clients, right? Have a pretty good offer that seems attractive for your ideal client specifically, right? We're not just creating. I have a service, right? And then saying, "Hey, I have a service. Do you want to join? <laughs> Do you want to sign up?" No, we're actually intentionally creating something, a service with a name, with a structure, with a specific goal, and for specific ideal client in mind, so that when you do put that offer out there, that your clients will sign up, right? So, having that little, creating that great offer that attracts clients. That's included in the plan of your business, right? Okay. And the second thing you need is the tech part. Definitely, we have an online business, right? We're gonna talk about online business, so we have to have certain things online to be able to support delivering sessions, attracting clients, things like that, right?、Um, and the third thing that you would need for this type of business is actually. Something a little bit about, about mindset, and that is actually embracing the non-clinical art therapist identity, this new version of yourselves. Because, I mean, I know there are lots of art therapists here、uh, who are coming from like a more clinical background, clinical work experience, right?、Um, and so it sometimes takes a little bit of that switching of our minds, like embracing a different identity and kind of.、Um, Releasing of that kind of old identity of like just doing clinical work and and just so getting used to all the limitations and restrictions that come with the work. Like when we step into non-clinical work, we have to step into a whole new identity, a new person, a new. We have a new role,、um, new version and vision of ourselves. So、um, that's important, I think, really, especially for our mindset.、Um, the last thing that you do need is to have. Support meaning have some kind of person or community right there to support you because the reality is that when we want to do this type of work, the non-clinical online business thing, I mean it's it feels like nobody else is doing it, and that can be really deflating, right? When we are working on a new project, if there is no You know, support from around us. It can feel like you're you're just alone doing this thing. Nobody really cares, and you feel like you're just so isolated and not doesn't don't have resources, right? So make sure that you have some support or community. The best type of support would be a community, really, right? Lots of different people in it,、um, but with a similar vision and you know and doing similar work. Right to support you along the way, because you know starting a business is can be challenging in the beginning, especially. So the community is important. So with that said, what can we do now? If you are a therapist now, you're like, I really want to get started. I really want to, you know, set myself on a path of having a really profitable online non-clinical business in doing this one-on-one work. Number one is this. First of all, we got to make that mindset shift, 
meaning let's embrace that new identity of a non-clinical art therapist. Whatever it is that you need to let go, maybe like limiting thoughts and beliefs about what you can do <laughs> as an art therapist, we may, and also maybe fears and hesitations about this work, we let go and we focus on what can be possible for us. What is it that you truly, truly want? Because I honestly think as art therapists, and I see this a lot of times, it's like we do not let ourselves go for what we truly want. We settle so much. And no, I, this comes from my own experience, but we settle so much, right? We think, oh, this is all I can get, right? Like, that's all. However, I really want you to be honest with yourself and see what is it that you really, really want. If you had your ideal dream career and, and life, what is it? What would it look like? It, be honest, right? So that is number one, embrace that new identity. And second is ask yourself, what is it that you're passionate about? And think of an offer based on your passion. So as our therapist, I know that we can be very general about who we help. We can say like, oh, I help everybody. Like I can help people with PTSD to anxiety, to depression, to OCD, whatever. However, I want you to let go of that idea. And I want you to really just get very specific about what is it that I'm passionate about in terms of the topic, maybe niche or issue or client population, right? Who do you most love working with, right? Identify that. That's going to be so crucial. When you know what you are passionate about in terms of the topic or the population, that is where your offer comes. That is where your marketing comes. That is where your business is going to you know, grow and, and build <laughs> so much. Although I'm speaking specifically to art therapists today, uh, but this really all applies to facilitators and creative coaches as well. If you, who might have a different background other than art therapy, masters and license and degree, right? Definitely you can charge those numbers and you can do those services because we are talking about non-clinical services here and non-clinical service is not, you know, clinical, it's not mental health treatment, it's not going to go through insurance, you are providing it through your own business. And so this is totally possible for you. Uh, even if an uh, art therapist provides a non-clinical service, which is what facilitators and creative coaches can provide as well. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So definitely, yes, it is possible for facilitators and coaches. All right, thank you all for being here. Have a good day. Bye-bye.